It's Create Day, my friends. Welcome back to another video. Today I am making over four thrifted items that will hopefully inspire you for your next project. Let's get started. For my first project, I'm using this wooden cutting board, and I will also be making some baubles out of the IOD baubles mold with my amazing resin. But first, we need to get the board painted. I started out with this off-white color. Um, it was just a leftover sample paint that I had. But then I just completely changed my mind about the background color for this. So in comes my chalk paint that's called Sage. And I'm going to coat the entire board, front, sides, back, with two coats of this. While the paint dries, I'm going to mix up my resin. It's two parts, A and B, that you mix equally, pour into the molds, and then you end up with these absolutely gorgeous baubles. I'm only using three of them, but that means I have three left over to use on another project. For the base coat on these, I'm going to be using Dixie Bell's chalk paint in the color Mud Puddle. This will make a good base for me. I only need to apply one coat, and since the other paints I'll be using are acrylic, it'll be a lot easier to cover this color up than to try and cover up the white. I would need several coats of the acrylic paints to do that. Next up, I'm using the Olive Crest Mold from IOD, and again, I'm using the amazing casting resin. I'm going to pour this into the, um, it's kind of like a, of a viney, um, leafy type mold that has like the little round, I'm going to call them berries. Um, for these purposes, to me, they're going to be like red Christmas berries. This is just a little time lapse here of how that sets up. It goes from clear to white in just a matter of minutes. And so now I need to add that same mud puddle colored paint to these for their base coat. So back to the board, now that the paint is dry, I'm using IOD's decor stamp called Kindest Regards, and I'm using the IOD ink in the color Stone Gray. I'll ink up my stamp, and then I can press this on, and it just gives a really nice light um, black background, so it's not a stark black, um, so it just looks a lot softer and that's just perfect. I just fill in one little spot that didn't have any writing on it, and we're good to go. Now I want to add some texture. I'm using my brick stencil that I have. It's a craft treat stencil, and it's on Amazon. I can leave the link below. This is my Distress Crackling Paste. That's what I'm going to be using with this stencil. I'm going to figure out where I want it. At first, I wanted to leave it untextured in the areas that the molds would be on but then I just changed my mind I went ahead and ended up putting it all over the board and then I just sanded it down a little bit so there weren't any high peaks or sharp edges and my molds still glued on just fine. I'm using a palette knife to spread this crackle paste on there and smooth it out the best I can. I will be leaving a list of all the items I used on these projects today in the description box, as well as links to everything that I can find links for. Now this crackle paste is pretty cool because it does, it goes on white so you can see it, but it dries translucent. So you can paint over it or um, just like what I'm going to do is use a glaze and it will pick up that color but it's not like you're trying to cover up, like if it were a white paste or something, you don't have to like completely cover the color up. So um, I've, I've used this a couple of times and I really like it. When that was dry, I gave it a coat of my Matte Clear Sealer. 
Now I am going in with my Dixie Belle Van Dyke Brown Glaze. I'm just going to brush this on over the entire board. I'm going to work in sections though so that it doesn't dry on there. I want to brush it on and wipe it back before it's dry. So I'm just going to continue this process all the way down the board and along the edges. I am not doing the back at this time. I always wait until the end to do the back because otherwise it'll get messed up just by being moved around and worked on. So I always wait and do that at the end. Just covering the entire board, wiping it back with a cloth, and this adds a lot of age. And now you can really pick up and see that texture on there. And you can still see the scripting underneath it. And that, that's the kind of stuff I really like. Now it's time to paint our castings. I'm using Dixie Belle's Palmetto to start with. I'm going to go around all of the leaves on this and try to avoid the little berries as much as I can because I want to paint them red. And then I'm going to be painting the stem parts a brown color. I started off with this burgundy red and I, I did not like it. It um, was, well, it's a matte paint. Um, I was going to say it was really flat, but it's a matte paint. This is the bark brown that I use for the stems here. But with the uh, burgundy red, I decided that I wanted a much richer red. So I ended up custom mixing a color to get that um, effect that I want. And here I'm just using that bark brown to paint in all those little stems. I needed some really tiny brushes uh, to get in there and get to those. So now here's how I'm going to make my red. I'm taking cardinal red and some leaf green. And by adding the green to the red just a little bit, it darkens the red so it's not such a bright red. It's a darker, richer red. And you just kind of have to fiddle with it until you get the shade you want. But it doesn't take a whole lot of green um, to get that difference in shading there. So I was happy with this shade that I had going, and so I'm going to go ahead and paint all those little berries with this. Here's where you can see the difference between the burgundy red and then the color I made with the cardinal red and the green. I'm going to use this same color that I made up to paint the bobbles, using it on the um, kind of larger center portions and then the smaller areas will get a gold paint. I'm also using this paint for a little bow that I cast from the IOD Jingle Mold. Now this is the metallic gold paint I'm using on my uh, bobbles. And I really like this one. It is not like a bright gold and it's not I don't know how to, it's almost like a champagne colored gold. And I was just really drawn to that with this having more of a vintage look. So those are all the little sections I'm painting in that on all of my baubles. Now I'm going to use that sage chalk paint watered down to go over the leaf sections of these castings that I did earlier. I'm going to brush this on there and then dab off the excess. If you've watched me for very long, you know I do this sort of thing all the time. I, to me, it just adds so much more to a painted piece to have all these different layers and um, colors and different things going on. I just really like the way, and like with this particular green, it was pretty, pretty bright. So I like the way this kind of mutes it down and it will prepare me or prepare it for the next step which will be adding some age to it.
and that next step is to add some Van Dyke Brown Glaze. Same thing as before on the cutting board, I'm just going to brush this on and wipe it back with a cloth. I do try to make sure that I get it down into all those little crevices because that's where you really kind of want it to sit and be darker than on the tops of it. And here you can see the difference between the one with the glaze and the one without. Now on the baubles, I decided I thought it would look good to add this, uh, the metallic gold, onto the red sections, just in a dry brush, just to add a little bit of something on there to make it look a little more antiqued. I did the same thing with the little red bow. Now this came from Dollar Tree, I believe. They're little, uh, really thin metal words. I think they come in three or four in a pack. And I want to paint this in that same gold metallic paint, but I knew that this would need a good base coat of something on here, so I'm using that same Dixie Belle mud puddle um, and letting that dry and then I can go in with the metallic gold and stand half a chance at getting this to cover all that up and stand out for me. Now back to the cutting board. I'm going to use my fusion paint in the color parchment and that same gold metallic paint from CraftSmart and using them separately going to add a little water, get my fan brush, and do some splatters on here like I've done on many of my projects. I use the white first, let that dry, and then I go in with the gold. I'm using polycrylic sealer for the little piece sign just to give it a little extra protection since I did paint on that metal um, I felt like it needed a little help to make sure it stayed on there so now it's time to glue on our castings I'm using tight bond glue starting with the garlands getting them in position where I want them and then I can get the make sure the ornaments are lined up where I want them and glue them down now I did have to be patient and hold these down until that glue kind of set up a little bit because of that texture on the board. It really needed a little pressure put on there to make sure it adhered properly. When that glue was all dry, I took that same gold paint and with a small paintbrush, I'm just going to make my little strings like these are, you know, hanging from the vines. Except for the middle one. It's going to be hanging from nothing. It's going to be hanging from the hole in the board. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that's okay. Because I do add some embellishments up, at, up there at the top. So with that piece sign across the front there, you're not, it's not really going to matter. But I go ahead and make sure it, it does have its little hanger drawn in there. So now to attach this little sign, I thought the only thing I that would probably work is E6000. And the tube I have is shot. It's dried up. I got a toothpick and tried to dig out enough to make this work, and it did, but I, I had to get some more um, for my future projects because it's just toast. And it was it's a shame because the tube is only like half gone, but for some reason it's just, it's all dried up and um, I can't even get it out of the tube anymore. I have to dig it out with a toothpick. So I'm going to go ahead and add my embellishments. I've got some greenery that I just cut off of different bunches of Christmas greenery that I had. Hot gluing those down, trying to fill in that hole just a little bit. 
And now I am using some pip berries that I think I got at Hobby Lobby last year. And I curled them around that paintbrush handle. And then I'm attaching those, one on either side there. Um, just, you know, it has a, those little gold pit berries on it. So I thought that that kind of tied in nicely. And once I get these glued on, I can add the little red bow. And then I will finish the back. Like I said, I'm going to give it another coat of paint because it's got that, end, um, that glaze on there. So I want to give it a fresh coat of paint. Then I will glaze it. And when, when that's dry, the last step is going to be adding some of this um, Spanish Copper Rub and Buff. I'm using a um, an old Credi paintbrush that I use just for my Rub and Buff. Uh, I felt like my finger would not be able to get in there around those little tight corners. And especially since this is pretty close to that board, I thought for sure I would end up just getting it all over the board. So I'm using a brush for this one. And that just adds some antiquing around those edges. And then I'm doing the same on the little bobbles. On the part that's painted metal or gold to add some age to those and this project is done My next project is a lot simpler and I absolutely love how it turns out. I have this little thrifted bucket that I got from Goodwill. I'm going to clean it up, remove the stickers, and then I'm going to sand off this design on front. You can tell it's like a sticker and I was afraid that would show through when I painted. So I got a lot of that sanded off, cleaned everything up, and then gave it a couple of coats of this Rust-Oleum Champagne Mist. It's going to go lovely with this IOD transfer from Candy Cane Cottage. It's this little Christmas tree. I'm going to get that cut out and then apply it to the front of my bucket. I like using a piece of painter's tape to just secure it in the spot that I want so that I can remove that backing, then lay the transfer down and smooth it out with my hand. Then I can grab my little transfer tool and burnish this on to the front of the bucket. When that has completely transferred over, I take that transfer sheet and burnish it to make sure it's on there really well. Next, I'm going to seal this with my Jolie Clear Top Coat Finishing Wax. Just rubbing this on with a cloth, and then I will go around and buff off any excess. I'll do this around the entire bucket, and then all that's left is to add a few embellishments. This little wood slice came in a pack of bigger wood slices that I purchased from Amazon. And I want to remove this like a you know keychain type thing here just by loosening up that jump ring and pulling that off because I want to keep the hanger. And I have this scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby with these vintage Santa faces. So I'm just going to trace around one of the faces so that I can cut that out. And I will be decoupaging that onto my wood slice. I decided that I didn't want the um, black and white polka dot background on here, so I just went ahead and did some fussy cutting around the Santa so I could put just him onto that little wood slice. Next, I'm using my antiquing wax to put over the center section of the little wood slice. 
I realized that it was actually too thick, so I ended up watering this down. And I'm going to cover both of the middle sections, the front and the back, with my watered down antiquing wax. And then I can take a cloth and wipe back the excess. When that antiquing wax was dry, I didn't get footage of it, but I did a coat of that same gold um, paint that I used in the first project and put that over the front on um, the side that I'm putting the Santa Claus face on. And I wanted to do some distress ink around the Santa. I started out with this antique linen, but I didn't like the color of it, so I went back in with brushed corduroy and went around the edges with that and um, it just gave it a really nice aged look. So now it's time to put our Santa on our wood slice. I'm going to use my matte Mod Podge for this, applying it to the back of the Santa. And then I will put that on my wood slice and apply the Mod Podge on the top of it from the center working it out to the edges of the wood slice. And then I also use the Mod Podge on the outer edge because sometimes that bark will um, chip off pretty easily. So I like to just seal that in with the Mod Podge as well. I have a little bit of this ribbon left that I got from Michaels, I believe last year. It was like the perfect shade of red and instead of a bright white, it's a cream color. I just wrap that around the bucket, um, going underneath the little handles, and then I'm tying a very simple bow. And then with a piece of jute twine, I looped it through the hanger on the wood slice and then brought one piece of it, of the jute twine, up back behind that bow. And then I can bring the other piece around and then tie that in a knot. And then that way the knot will be behind the bow. Once I have that tied on, I can go ahead and cut off the excess and then I can just kind of fiddle around with this to make sure I have that knot hidden back behind the bow and that my Santa's hanging right. And then the only thing left to do is trim up the ends of that ribbon. That's it for this one and here's how it turned out. Next up is our little teapot makeover. This little guy, I cleaned him up really well and this, some of the stains I just couldn't get rid of. So I went ahead and gave him a couple of coats of my heirloom white spray paint and that covered all that up. And now I've got this tissue paper that's made for decoupaging off of Amazon, I believe. I've had this for quite a while. If I can find the link, I'll leave it below. It's like a postage stamp or like a postcard type um, paper with script and postage marks and whatnot. Uh, I have never found a project up to this point to use this on. So um, I was kind of excited that I thought it would work for this one. I'm using my water pen to cut this into just some workable sizes uh, for decoupage. And if you can also use a paintbrush dipped in water just to tear it so it has a nice organic edge. I'm going to apply that Mod Podge and then apply the little strip of tissue paper, smoothing it down. I'm not worried about, um, you know, getting no wrinkles. I, I like it to be nice and rustic. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, smooth it out with some Mod Podge on my brush. Any little areas that aren't covered I will fill in after I get all the main pieces on here. 
So again, just applying some Mod Podge, then smoothing it out with my brush, dipped in more Mod Podge, and working my way around this little teapot, adding the tissue paper, and then again, going back once all those main pieces are on, I'll go back and find little pieces that fit in to fill in all those voids. Once that Mod Podge is dry, I'm taking my white gesso and watering it down a little bit so that I can do a hazy coat over this paper. It kind of has a yellowish background to it, which I don't really care for. And I just wanted to kind of mute it all down a little bit. So I brush that watered down gesso on and then take a baby wipe and just dab around to remove some of it so that you it, you know it doesn't completely cover the design but this way you can also get parts that some parts poke through better than others I don't know this is just a method that I like to use I know it's not everybody's jam so um, you know by all means don't don't do this step if you think this looks absolutely hideous um, it's you know to each their own I'm going to paint the lid of the teapot, and I thought I wanted this Santa red, but once I got it on there, it was like, oh boy, no, 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 this is way too bright, this is supposed to be a more muted project, so I went ahead and painted that, let it dry, and then I went with that burgundy paint that I wasn't happy with for my berries, I thought that would tone this down perfectly, it will go better with the transfer I'm going to add to the front of the teapot. So I went ahead and then painted the little handle handles, the portion that's not covered by the, the plastic piece on top. I'm going to do something different with that. So I'm just doing the handles and the lid in this red color. I'm using Dixie Bell's Caviar to paint the section that holds the handles on there and then the inside of the spout and also the rim around the opening of the teapot and then just inside that rim, the, the part that, um, that you can see before it gets to the other part of the teapot. I don't go all the way down into the teapot with the black paint. I just paint that rim. So I'm painting this handle because I'm going to actually wrap this in twine, but I thought it would be better to have a dark color underneath it in case, you know, somehow that was poking through at all. I didn't want the bright white coming through the uh, jute twine. So here I'm just painting that rim, and I needed to do uh, two, I think maybe three coats of this well, maybe the chalk paint, I probably did two coats, but it was three coats with the acrylic paint to get all that covered. I'm doing the inside of that lid of the teapot as well with the black or the caviar uh, chalk paint. Now I'm using my Select Seal Matte Sealer to seal everything, the lid, and the entire teapot, with the exception of the inside, doing the handles and um, the outside there because I did that white gesso on there, so that needs to be sealed. I'm adding my Jolie Black Wax to the lid. I'm going to add this to uh, the handles as well brushing this on and wiping it back. It just gives it a much richer, uh, more muted color, more antique looking, just like I want it.
I'm going to be using a couple of transfers from this one I got off of Amazon by Redesign. It's called Xmas Tags on Amazon, and I'll try to leave the link for that if I can below. I want to put this Christmas one on front. I had to do a little trim job there to get it to wrap around the teapot. I just had to cut a little snippet in the corner of that transfer sheet so that it would bend a little better. So using my transfer tool, I'm just going to rub this on and then burnish it really well. And then I'm going to use the other transfer from this is uh, just a little simple Welcome Santa. And I'm going to put that on the lid of the teapot. Now I want to wrap some jute twine around the under side of the rim of the teapot. So I'm just going to use my hot glue, get it started, and kind of wrap it around, gluing it where I need to. And then I wrap this around several times. And I will also be doing this on the handle. So here we go with the handle. I am just going to start this at the end of the little plastic piece there. I, I want to cover up where the plastic piece of handle connects to the metal piece of handle. So I started it not on top of it, but right next to it. I'm just going to wrap that around, glue it, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the little knob on my uh, teapot lid. Then I use fire to burn off all the little fuzzies. The last step is the antique gold ribbon buff around all the edges of the handles and the tea spout and the uh, lid of the teapot as well. Now I chose to tie the lid off to one side um, hanging off the handle so that I could add some greenery to the inside of the teapot. That's just personal choice if you wanted to leave the lid on or whatever. But this is the final step and here's how this turned out. Final project today is this utensil holder that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm just giving it a light sanding because it had quite a shiny finish to it. Get it all cleaned up and ready for paint. I used my Heirloom White Rust-Oleum spray paint and now I am on to making some castings for this that's going to go around the top of the utensil holder. This is IOD's olive crest mold. This is the same one I used on that first project and I'm going to um, make the same castings basically. I, I'm, but I'm not doing both of them. I'm only doing one and doing, I think I do three of those and so they're all just going in one direction all the way around the top of that utensil holder. 
I'm using the air dry clay for this one because it will be much easier for me to manipulate these around there when I go to glue them on. I'm using my tight bond glue and you'll see because I want to kind of lay these on the top edge but then wrap them. I don't really lay it on the top. I lay it on the side but then I wrap the leaves around onto the top. I guess that would be a better way of saying it. So it kind of has to curve over and I felt like clay was just a better option to do this. So I'll get that one glued on, then I'll do another casting of the same exact mold and put that one on and then I have to do part of a third one. I don't have to do the whole thing, just enough to fill in the remaining gap on the top of that. So here's where I have to add that extra piece to fill in the gap. And I just, I made a little more than I needed so I could overlap it and then cut that with my little X-Acto knife. So that they overlap, because when this dries, it's gonna shrink up a little bit. And I didn't want there to be a big gap. So I didn't try to line them up exactly. I did some overlapping and it worked out really well. Now it's time for paint. I'm using Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Putty. I did not wait for my castings to completely dry. I did wait for them to set up enough that I could add paint without causing them to move or get distorted. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the entire utensil holder in this color using a smaller brush on the casting so that I can get that down into all the details. For my final coat of paint on this, I am using a sea sponge with that same color, putty, but I'm, I'm dabbing it on to create a texture and that will eliminate any brush strokes, but it also just adds some interest because even though it's just paint and there's no texture in the paint, by doing it that way, it creates a texture that looks really natural. Once that was dry, I need to seal this piece and I'm using my Minwax Polycrylic Matte Sealer. When that was dry, it was time to do the stamping. I'm using IOD's Portobello Road Stamp. This is the first time I'm using it, so I'm priming it with some fine grit sandpaper first. Now I'm gonna use this bakery stamp, but I'm gonna have these two other stamps in front of the bakery stamp. So I have to figure out my placement because the, any stamp that's in front needs to go down first and then you can mask over it when you do the other stamp. So I'm going to be placing down the woman and the um, it's like a little pot of flowers on the other side. I'll do those first and then mask them to do the bakery stamp. So I have to remember where she's going. This and this is on a curved surface. So I'm putting I put the light post there so I would remember where she goes. And working on this curved surface and having to mask things was not easy. Um I would recommend that if if you're not familiar with stamping things and using the masks to use a flat surface first. Uh, doing it on a curved surface is much more difficult. So um, I stamped her once but it was pretty faded so I went in again to kind of darken it up a little bit and now I'm laying that bakery stamp on there again to make sure I get the placement of the florals in the right spot and then I'm going to ink that up and stamp that one down.
So now I'm applying the mask over the woman stamp and I had to use some tape to hold it in place and I'm doing the same with the other one so that I can apply the bakery stamp over that and it won't cover them up. It will look like they are in front of it. So now I have that stamp inked up. I'm going to position it on there and press it down, always holding it in place with one hand while ap applying pressure with my fingers of the other hand until I can get this entire thing stamped on. And it, this took me, it, I think I just took too long getting it down, so I didn't get a really good image. I had to add some more ink and then line it up again and re-stamp it to fill in the areas. I didn't mind a little of it not coming through because it looks kind of rustic that way, but there were just too many spots that didn't get enough ink, especially like on that right-hand side. So I re-inked it and did it again. I inked up my next stamp, which was the guy walking his dog. I'm going to apply that down. And then from here on out, I'm just going to keep applying the stamps I chose for this. Originally, I was going to do some background stamps. They have bricks and they have uh, like rock walls, but I added so many stamps on here, I just decided that it was too much, so I left those out. Now, this one I'm doing a window with a window box under it, so I have to do the window box first. That's why I had the window on there to show me where I should be placing it. So now I can ink up that window, add that, and then it will look like the window box is in front of the window. And I'm using Stays On Ink and Jet Black for this. Next I will add a door and then another window with a window box on it and then a few more stamps to finish this out. With the stamping all done, I'm using my Jolie Finishing Wax in the color black to go into all the details of the castings that I put on the rim of this utensil holder. I'm going to brush that on. I'm using a couple different sizes of brushes so that I can get it down into all the details. And then I'll wipe it back with a cloth. I'm also adding this black wax down at the bottom, leaving a little space between the stamp and the bottom, but this just gives some definition of, you know, like where the ground would be. And then I go ahead and add it to the bottom of the container as well. I'm adding some of the Jolie Finishing Wax in clear just over the main section of this where I have all the stamps since those have not been sealed. I'm going to brush that on and wipe it back and then I can go in with some white wax and I don't have to worry about it you know, overpowering my stamps. I added this to the inside as well since I did not seal that with the polycrylic.
Now we are on to the white wax. I'm going to apply this over the entire utensil holder, working about half of the utensil holder at a time, brushing it on, and then wiping it back. The final step is our antique gold rub and buff. Using my finger, I'm going to go around all those castings on the top, just kind of hitting the high spots all the way around. And then I will also apply this on that bottom rim, and that will complete this project. I show in the pictures with some florals and also with just some plain black utensils, so you can see how you could use it either way. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you find my content useful and will like and subscribe if you haven't already. But more importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.